Welcome to a Grace Digital presentation. In this video, we shall be discussing the topic, How David's Sons Fell Because of Sin. It is always very disheartening to see promising individuals cut short at the peak of their glory by temptations they could have resisted and sins they could have rejected, especially when hopes have been quite high about their future. Unfortunately, this was the circumstance that surrounded King David's son Solomon and Absalom. King David's son Absalom died as a result of his rebellion against his father. He wanted the throne for himself and in the process he committed a lot of atrocities. The rebellion was unnecessary because he was most likely next in line to succeed his father and become king. But his impatience and ungodly counsels drove him to his death. 2 Samuel 18, 1-18 AMP David numbered the men who were with him and set over them commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. Then David sent the army out, a third under the command of Joab, the third under Abashai, the son of Zeruai, Joab's brother, and a third under the command of Atai the Gittite. And the king said to the men, I myself will certainly go out to fight with you. But the men said, You should not go out to battle with us. For if in fact we retreat, they will not care about us. Even if half of us die, they will not care about us. But you are worth ten thousand of us. So now it is better that you be ready to help us from the city of Mahanaim. Then the king said to them, I will do whatever seems best to you. So the king stood beside the gate of Mahanaim, and all the army went out in groups of hundreds and of thousands. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently with the young man Absalom for my sake. And all the men heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders about Absalom. So the men went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel who supported Absalom were defeated there by the men of David, and a great slaughter took place there that day, twenty thousand men. For the battle there was spread out over the surface of the entire countryside, and the hazards of the forest devoured more men that day than did the sword. Now Absalom met the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a massive tree, and his head was caught in the thick branches of the tree and he was left hanging in mid-air between heaven and earth, while the mule that had been under him kept going. A certain man saw it and informed Joab, saying, I saw Absalom hanging in a tree. Joab said to the man who informed him, You saw him. Why then did you not strike him there to the ground? I would have given you ten pieces of silver in a belt. The man told Joab, Even if I were to feel the weight of a thousand pieces of silver in my hands, I would have not have put my hand against the king's son, for we all heard the king command you, Abishai and Ittai, saying, Protect the young man Absalom for my sake. Otherwise, if I had acted treacherously against his life, for nothing is hidden from the king, you yourself would have taken sides against me. Joab said, I will not waste time with you. So he took three spears in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was still alive and caught in the midst of the tree. And ten young men, Joab's armor-bearers, surrounded and struck Absalom and killed him. Then Joab blew the trumpet to signal the end of the combat. And the men returned from pursuing Israel, for Joab held them back. They took down the body of Absalom and threw him into a deep pit in the forest and set up a huge mound of stones over him. Then all Israel fled, everyone to his own tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and set up for himself a memorial pillar, which is in the king's valley. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. He named the memorial pillar after himself, and to this day it is called Absalom's Monument. King Solomon, on the other hand, started so well, but lost his glory to sin. For him, adultery was so addictive to the point that he began to experiment with different kinds of women. He married 700 wives, had 300 concubines, built shrines, sacrificed to other gods and deities. This was a real burnout coming from someone who loved the Lord so passionately. God crossed with him and turned his glory to shame. 1 Kings 11, 1-40 AMP Now King Solomon defiantly loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, 
Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women from the very nations of whom the Lord said to the Israelites, You shall not associate with them, nor shall they associate with you. For the results will be that they will turn away your hearts to follow their gods. Yet Solomon clung to these in love. He had seven hundred wives, princesses, three hundred concubines, and his wives turned his heart away from God. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away from other gods. And his heart was not completely devoted to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the fertility goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the horror detestable idol of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil things in the sight of the Lord, and did not follow the Lord fully, as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for worshipping Chemosh, the horror detestable idol of Moab, on the hill which is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the horror detestable idol of the sons of Ammon. And he did the same for all of his foreign wives. He burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. So the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart was turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, and that he should not follow other gods. But he did not observe, remember, obey what the Lord had commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. However, I will not do it in your lifetime, for the sake of your father David, but I will tear it out of the hand of your son Rehoboam. However, I will not tear away all the kingdom. I will give one tribe, Judah, to your son for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem which I have chosen. Then the Lord stirred up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was of loyal descent in Edom, for it came about when David was in Edom, and Joab the commander of the army had gone up to bury those killed in battle, and had struck down every male in Edom, for Joab and all the army of Israel stayed there six months, until he had killed every male in Edom. That Hadad escaped to Egypt, he and some Edomites from his father's servants with him. When Hadad was still a little boy, they set out from Midian, south of Edom, and came to Paran, and took men with them from Paran and came to Egypt, to Pharaoh king of Egypt, who gave young Hadad a house and ordered food and provisions for him and gave him land. Hadad found great favor with Pharaoh, so that he gave Hadad in marriage the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tapines the queen, the sister of Tapines gave birth to Jenabath, Hadad's son, whom Tapines weaned in Pharaoh's house. Then Jenabath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. But when Hadad heard in Egypt that David had died and that Joab the commander of the army was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me leave so that I may go to my own country. Then Pharaoh said to him, But what have you lacked with me that now you ask to go to your own country? He replied, Nothing. Nevertheless, you must let me go. God stirred up another adversary for Solomon, Rezan the son of Elida, who had fled from his master, Hadadezer king of Zobah. Rezan gathered men to himself and became leader of a marauding band, after David killed those in Zobah. They went to Damascus and stayed there, and they reigned in Damascus. So Rezan was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, along with the evil that Hadad had inflicted. Rezan hated Israel and reigned over Aram, Syria. Jeroboam, Solomon's servant, the son of Nebat, an Ephrathite of Zerida, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow, also rebelled against the king. Now this is the reason why he rebelled against the king. Solomon built the Milo fortification, and he repaired and closed the breach of the city of his father David. The man, Jeroboam, was a brave warrior. And when Solomon saw that the young man was industrious, he put him in charge of all the forced labor of the house of Joseph. It came about at that time, when Jeroboam left Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite met him on the road. Now Ahijah had covered himself with a new cloak, and the two of them were alone in the field. Then Ahijah took hold of the new cloak which he was wearing and tore it into twelve pieces. He said to Jeroboam, Take ten pieces for yourself, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, 
Behold, I am going to tear the kingdom from the hand of Solomon and give you ten tribes. But he and his descendants shall have one tribe. Benjamin was annexed to Judah. For the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because they have abandoned me and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the sons of Ammon. And they have not walked in my ways and followed my commandments, doing what is right in my sight and keeping my statutes and my ordinances as did his father David. However, I will not take the entire kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of my servant David, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and give it to you, ten tribes. Yet to his son I will give one tribe, so that my servant David may have a lamp always before me in Jerusalem, the city where I have chosen to put my name and presence. I will take you, Jeroboam, and you shall reign over whatever your soul desires, and you shall be king over Israel, the ten northern tribes. Then it shall be that if you listen to all that I command you and walk in my ways, and do what is right in my sight, keeping and observing my statutes and my commandments, as my servant David did, then I will be with you and build you an enduring house, as I built for David, and I will give Israel to you. And in this way I will afflict the descendants of David for this their sin, but not forever. So Solomon attempted to kill Jeroboam. But Jeroboam set out and escaped to Egypt to Shishak king of Egypt, and stayed in Egypt until Solomon died. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for teaching me how sin can steal the plans that you have for me, just like it did for Absalom and Solomon. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you give me the grace to keep on loving and obeying you. Amen.